Thank you, uh, Chairperson, and um, thank you, Dr. Mohanty, for giving me this opportunity. You have already summarized the entire session, and I think you have done it in a very uh, succinct way. So I think it's much easier task for all of us. So as he rightly said, there are a few important considerations when we look at these supracondylar fractures. One is the distance of fracture line from the implant, which type of implant is there, whether CR or PS, whether the component is stable or not, how is the bone stock, how is the combination, and what is the fracture pattern. So before you make any judgment about what to do, you need to know this basic six information, and based on that, you will take your decisions. We've got a lot of implant options, and we'll see through this whole thing. We've got buttress plates, periarticular plate, locking plate, retrograde, locking nail, integrate locking nail, revision with stem, revision with augments, and of course, distal femoral replacement. Now, if you have to have the algorithm, you must first decide whether it's a stable or unstable component, whether it's more than 20 millimeter away from the joint line and non-comminated, or less than 20 millimeter from the joint line or comminated. If it is more than 20 millimeter non-comminated, you prefer nail. If you have less than 20 millimeter from the joint line and combination present, you should consider locking plate. And of course, if you have an unstable component, you have got these choices which the other speakers will talk about. Now, before I proceed further, we all know go, must go to our basics. And we know that for any healing to happen, because we are talking about fractures, we need to have good cells, good growth factors, and good scaffold or good bone to allow the enabling. As is our biology, so is our orthopedics with little help from biomechanics and that's the help I'm going to talk about. Again, some basic things and I think we should not move away from our root thing. One must know about the fracture healing well. One must know about how the periosteal diameters make a difference and how the fracture strength changes from day to day. Now, single plate versus dual plate. And I, 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 I may be accused of being dogmatic or being very radical, but I think there is no role of, after having done many Peri-prosthetic factor. I have realized there is no role of a single plate in um, in in any of these supracondylar periprosthetic fractures, and I say this because it's not the same elsewhere. Because you have used the cement, the biology is poor. The amount of forces there are tremendous, and even a well, very well done plate here will fail because most of the time the fracture healing occurs either because of the good biology and good compression. If you put a locking plate only on one side. The failure rate is unacceptable. I will not say that no, and there will be many people who have done single plate and have succeeded. But the amount of failure that you get in single plate, I don't think that is worth the effort. So either you nail it or you plate it. And if you plate it, either dual plate or a nail and plate combination is best to reduce the unsuccess rate to an acceptable standard. Keywords, reduction of metaphyseal shear by medial plate and decreasing stress per unit area by using large working lathe. So how to execute it? Neutralize the forces on the medial side and you use a long plate on the lateral side. Why people are afraid of doing medial plate is because they feel that it's unsafe. A lot of studies to show that now you can put uh, the medial plate up to 8 cm distal to the lesser trochanter. Our own studies, which was done for a different thing, has done the anatomical study and shows the femoral neurovascular bundle is quite away from the area that you need to plate. So if anyone is interested, they can read the entire anatomical standards. Now, uh, the one and, and the biomechanical part of it is that it has been clearly shown that it is much superior biomechanically to do a dual plate. And why not do it then? The key point, as I said, how to execute is get a good reduction. On the lateral side, there should be polyaxial screw placement opportunity, long enough plate that and use any measure that enhances pull out strength and enhances the biology and leave the metaphyseal and comminuted area alone. If you did all that on the lateral side, you'll be good. And uh, on the medial side, as I said, you have to use the plate in the buttress mode. Just one small, a few, we have a clinical case discussion here, but we'll just run through this case. This is again a standard TKR. We did it robotically and one of the reasons for increased periprosthetic fractures in which we may see an epidemic is the use of robotic technology. My own case where we did this, you will see the pin placement track there and four weeks post-op, this is the x-ray, we had a periprosthetic fracture subsequent to the pin placement and that is the standard uh, thing that we did. This is the right and the left side. We put a plate on the medial side, uh, simple semi-tubular plate. But the ideal plate is either a philos or something that is used in buttress mode. But even a simple plate that neutralizes the shear 
like a semi tubular plate is easy to execute is good enough for this so that's the lateral and don't worry about plate being little off on the lateral side and this i have learned for dr tanna he said don't worry about that as long as you get a screw purchase and you span a long enough length another case and this is the case i would want to put a but uh, would want to show and buttress my case for using a dual plate this is something that we did and i hope and i uh, and i believe that we did a good job one year it stayed then started failing and then uh, no i think this is different x-ray sorry so so then we moved on and it failed after one year and we had to ultimately do a nailing and a plating again at that time we felt that we have again lost the plot but we had used bmp fortunately so the biology was there and hence we could get union over time so you can say exorbitant collapse after two years of this the biomechanical principle you may feel that it is not very sound here we also felt that it was probably day one failure but i think bmp did the trick we the fact that we used two um, systems a plate and a nail helped again a similar uh, uh, this is not my case but i helped later in the second part of the case uh, uh, this was done and then we had a refracture of periprosmic so you can have a re refractures also that bothers you of course when you have that you have to think about allograft massive allograft and spanning uh, it much beyond and then this is the final union for this case and sometimes life gives you googly like this case uh, we'll have case discussion again something that you don't have enough space to do the we use the cage so uh, the principle is that you use dual things this case i did with dr tanna someone who said gustafi mas with an arthroplasty surgeon so we said we'll take the person who will be able to do the gustafi gustaki mas and that's the result uh, so the only thing only uh, place where you can actually do a single plate is this one and that is why i have kept it at the end very simple straight forward fractures where you can do this so this is the only indication for me to do a use a single plate all other things i feel that we should use dual plate or dual fixation method the take home message is that we should recognize fracture reduce it splint get ct scan to visualize if there is an articular extension assess radiologically and interrupt the bone quality and the processes stability plan fixation depending on the type of fracture based on classification whether it is with or without intra articular extension bone graft where necessary and i think most cases if there is condition you must bone graft either the allograft or the autograft where if the patient is affording use bmp because you are giving one shot and you are trying to minimize the failures protect fractures and gradual guarded mobilization of course rehabilitation is important as i said these are the three critical elements good bone stock bmp if possible and good biomechanics as a surgeon we have to be an, an orchestra playing thing with lot of uh, things to juggle and i think biomechanics biology and the bone quality and most importantly decision making is the key i thank you for your attention